morning. So this is the beginning of the last week of lectures here on the course. So I started last time talking a little bit about the ordinal definable sets. So this is <clears throat> um, a way of getting into another class model, which is a model of the axiom of choice. It's not necessarily a model of the continuum hypothesis, but it's a very nicely defined um, inner model of the universe of sets. It may be all of V, it may be just L, it could be something intermediate, depending on what there is. This is the HOD model, the hereditarily ordinary <laughs> model. Right, so what we recap a little bit of what we did uh, last time. So just recall what the idea is. So this is all in 4.5. So the ordinal definable sets here. So this section is all about ordinal definability. So last time, what we have, we're going to say this set is, is ordinal definable. I'll write OD here. So there is some formula, phi V0, and there are some ordinals that I can put into the definition here. So that Z is the unique thing that makes this formula true. So if there is so if there is some formula phi so and some vector of ordinals here so z is the unique um, z bar such that phi z bar of alpha vector holds. Right. So in other words, singleton z is the collection of all of the z bars that make phi z alpha vector true. Okay, so this isn't being meaning is something is satisfied in a structure. This is about being true in V. Right? Right? So it's the unique Z bar that makes this true here in V. Now this by itself is not a formal definition within ZF. Right? <clears throat> in fact, once you're used to these things, if you talk about definability in V, this is a flag that the thing is not going to be something definable in ZF because we can't find one formula that gives definability in V. It's like Tarski's theorem on the undefinability of truth. But the specific form of being OD, we can actually give a so-called first order, meaning definable in ZF, definition for. So this can be given a first order. First order, because it's written in first order logic. Okay? formalizable in ZF. Um, we, so this was the definition which we called OD star, right? Z is in OD if and only if there is some V beta 
and there is some formula. Psi with free variable, just to phi zero. Here. And Z is definable over V beta by Psi. So in other words, singleton Z is the collection of Z bars such that V beta thinks five Z bar. So I say there is some formula, there is some code. So we've got a set of codes. So altogether, this is a variant on our def function. We just put in formulae, which just have the free variable v0 without any other parameters. So actually, there's a parameter free. I don't need to use these alpha vectors, right? If I choose my v beta wisely. So this was the theorem 421. Here. So what was definability over the whole universe V is reduced to just looking at the def zero function, just looking at definability over a V beta. Of course, different Zs need different V betas for this to work and different formulae. Actually, it's a curiosity. One can show that there's a single formula that'll work for all Zs that are in OD by this definition. There's an exercise to this effect, but um, it's it's sort of a curiosity, and it's not. Um, we don't need to go that far here today. Now the. <clears throat> And maybe this was part of Gödel's insight was that, right, since he showed that the AC was true in L by using an order of definability, we're pretty close to talking about the same kind of thing here. Right? We could order our definitions and our, therefore our ODZs, right, by ordering the formulae in the same way as before and then ordering the V beta as well by the ordinal beta. Right? So there's kind of a, an implicit ordering of definitions here. So this gives us 422. OD has a definable well order. And I kind of just sketched the idea in words already. We can always well order the V omega it's possible just to write down a, a well ordering of V omega each of the levels of the VNs are finite and we just use this to give us a well order of the formulae with just that free variable. OK, 
Okay. So as OD, we decided by the last theorem is the collection of sets Z, for which there is a, a beta such that Z is definable without using formally without parameters over V beta. So for any Z in OD, we can set the beta of Z to be the least beta, which is going to make this true. And we can let phi of Z be the least psi that makes this Z definable over that least phi beta. So we'll set beta of Z to be the least beta such that <clears throat> Z is definable over V beta of Z. And we'll let phi of Z to be the least formula. in our list. Which defines Z over V beta of Z. In our list, meaning the one getting we've gotten from our well order of V omega here. Okay, so now we just define here X OD comes before Z if and only if both these things are in OD. Beta of X is definable at an earlier beta, an earlier V beta than, than Z. Or you both have to go to the same place to find a definition for them. But then X's definition can be taken earlier than Z's definition. So and phi X is less than in the well order of V omega phi Z. So this is a proper class and we've imposed a well order on it. It is a proper class. Remember, every ordinal is OD. An ordinal gamma is just definable in V gamma plus one as being the largest ordinal. So all the ordinals are in here. But it's not necessarily the case that this is transitive. We'll mention more about this in a moment. Okay, so I hope this is um, understandable. So next, number Essentially what 423 is saying is that if you've got a definable class, no matter how you define it, it's going to be contained in OD. It's sort of like OD is the maximal definable class. So let A be any class that has a definable 
and I'll say set like, I'll, just, I'll expand on that in a moment. Well order, given by some formula. Then A is a subclass of OD. So we've just seen that OD itself has just been given a, a, a well order. <clears throat> this is saying it contains any other class that's well orderable in a set like fashion. So we explain what set like means here. So this is a well order, it actually doesn't have to be a well order, it could just be a partial order. Um, not, it doesn't have to be well founded, right? Just any partial order. So the idea is that if I take any element in A, Then the collection of, sorry, X's in A such that phi X Z naught, so the predecessors of Z naught in the well ordering phi defines here, this is a set. So the idea is initial segments of the well order are sets and not proper classes. And the well order we just did of OD is set like, right, in this way. Here it is again. If I've got a Z that's definable in OD, so it's in OD, it's got a particular beta of Z. The things that come earlier they have to be defined over an earlier ordinal. Well, there's only set many ordinals that are less than this ordinal. And at each ordinal less than this one, there's just these countably many definitions. So altogether, this ordering is going to be set-like. There aren't a, when we look at Z's definition in terms of beta and phi here, there are only set many definitions of earlier things. So this is a set like well order right here. And the lemma here says any other set like well order is its field is contained, it's a well order of sets which are all OD. So OD is a maximal class where there are definable well orderings, right, amongst definable well orderings of classes. Well, then the reasoning is reasonably simple because we've said that A itself, the well ordering is defined by a formula here. So we've got that this formula defines a well order. So we can define a rank function on that well order. I mean, it's a well ordered collection of sets, right, here. So we can just rank them first thing, second thing, third thing, alpha thing. So you can define by recursion um, a rank function for A. Uh, 
and we'll just say R, perhaps sub A of Z, this will just be the supremum of the ranks of the things that come before. So by the recursion theorem, this is a perfectly good definition. If I've got that my, my phi here is defining this term here, I mean this, defining my ordering on this class here, A. So this rank function is taking A to O n. And indeed, yeah, okay, it's taking A to O n. And for any z in A here, z has a rank. So some, some alpha here. So now I've got another way of thinking about z, right? I can define it from R. It's the least, sorry, it is that set which RA assigns alpha. So I can define Z from alpha here. So we may OD define that unique Z with RA of Z equals alpha. So I've got a formula that defines this function, which comes from the recursion theorem. And I've got an ordinal parameter. So I'm actually just defining it here, just in the ordinal parameter alpha with this implicit definition of what R is. So that puts Z into OD. So A is a subclass of OD. Okay, so there's an immediate corollary here, right? L, Gilles Constructible Universe, is a class with a definable set like well order. The global well order of L is of this form. So L is contained in OD. So by exercise four five, the global well order of L right? this was definable by a single formula. And also it's set like. which means that its initial segments all had order types that were ordinals and therefore sets. So the lemma applies then. By the lemma. Okay. 
So it's consistent that V equals OD. Basically, because it's consistent that V equals L. V equals L, this implies by the corollary here that V equals OD, because L is everything. And we've already shown that this is consistent with ZF. Right. So this was an earlier theorem 14. On the other hand, it's not provable that V equals OD, like it's not provable that V equals L, it turns out. Right? I mean, it might be that V equals OD, but it's consistent with the axioms that it's not. So that's the next comment, um, page 62. It's not provable in ZF that V equals OD. It's consistent relative to ZF that V is not OD. When I say relative to ZF, that means assuming for the sake of argument that ZF is consistent. So we have, just to spell it out, this is also the case. In fact, it's not even the case that OD may satisfy the axiom of extensionality. Right? It may contain all the ordinals, but it may not be transitive. So it may contain ON, but it may not be transitive. Indeed, axiom of extensionality may fail. So things could go badly wrong. Right? You could say, well, after all, it's just a bunch of sets that have been that are definable in logic. Right? So maybe we shouldn't expect OD to be an inner model here. But we can remedy this by just taking a potential subclass of OD. Let's take them so that the potential subclass is a model of extensionality and is transitive. And we do this by, I mean, axiom extensionality may fail is that we may have two different sets which are definable, 
but they're different. But OD doesn't have an OD witness to their difference. It could be that we've got two sets here, X and Y, which are different. Oh, right. maybe they overlap a bit, but I mean, maybe they overlap a bit, but these may be an OD, right? But perhaps there is some set Z here, which shows that X is different from Y. It's in Z, X, but not Y. But Z may not be an OD. So OD as a class doesn't see that there is a Z differentiating these two. So OD may think X and Y are the same, even though from outside in V, we can see they're different. So the lack of transitivity of OD is what stymies the idea that this is going to be an inner model. Well, it's going to model extensionality. So we look at the subclass of the hereditarily ordinal definable sets. So we remedy this by looking at stead, instead at the subclass of hereditarily ordinal definable sets. So HOD for short. <clears throat> this is definition 426. So when one uses here this um, adverb hereditarily for some property, hereditarily phi sets, it means those sets that have property phi and their elements have property phi and their elements elements have property phi. So we'll make sure then, if this is hereditarily ordinal definable, that these Zs are going to be in there. So Z is now HOD, if and only if, well, it's OD, but its transitive closure here is contained in OD. Right, so this ensures it's in OD and its members are in OD and its members, members are in OD and so on. So this kind of lacuna in this argument then is stopped here. So being OD kind of propagates downwards through the membership relation for the elements of Z and their elements in turn. So there's an exercise here, which I'll mention and we'll use but I'll leave it in case you're interested. Z is in HOD, if and only if it's in OD, and for all Y in Z, Y is in HOD. So actually this is just a variation on the definition up here. Right? So we just have an equivalence here and here. But you have to think about what you want to say. As far as subsets of omega are concerned, this is the same. This is perhaps not so surprising if I've got a subset of omega that's ordinal definable, all of the natural numbers are outright definable. So there are various formulae saying the certain natural number is in this set or out of this set and so on. So we've certainly got, right, if something is 
an ordinal definable subset of omega, then its transitive closure is either a natural number or omega itself. And these are all OD things. So anything that's ordinal definable subset of omega is here in HOD. So it's on this side. And the reverse inclusion is just by definition, because HOD is a subclass of OD. So this is not hard. Right? And now the main point of all of this, perhaps, is we can look here at 427. What we have is that all of the axioms of ZFC hold in HOD. So that is for each tor, each axiom tor of ZFC, tor holds relativized to this term, HOD. This is definable. We took pains to show that this was first order definable, and of course, then this is here. So this has a first order definition. So there's a term, HOD is a term, gives us this proper class of sets, Z. Again, proper class because OD contains all ordinals. Right? So let's see how the time is going here. Okay. So let's look at some of these axioms. We may not do them all. Why is this a model of ZFC? Okay, so we knock off the easy ones. Notice that HD is, is been defined to be transitive, right, here. To be an HOD means you're an OD, but all of your elements are the same. In fact, that's expressed here. To be an HOD, all your elements are in HOD, and you are OD. So it comes from the definition of 426 or exercise 18. We're going to have that, okay. The empty set is in HOD and the axiom of extensionality holds in HOD as it does in any transitive term, any transitive class here. And things like pairing and union are simple checks. are simple checks. If I've got a set X, which is in HOD, then this is the thing to use. The union of X will be in HOD. Right? Set of elements of elements of X is in OD and therefore in HOD. OD contains all ordinals. So omega right, is in HOD. So the axiom of infinity holds. So what have we done? We've, we've polished off here the axioms of pair, <clears throat> union, and infinity.
And then come the, the more the more difficult ones. So let's look at the axiom of power. Right, so this this one is not prima facie clear or obvious in the fact that it's going to hold in HOD. The others might have been easy enough. So we take X in HOD. What we want is for there to be a set that HOD thinks is X is power set. We want that this class here, right, so if we can show the following, then this will suffice. Right? So there's some comments as to why that will suffice. You might think, oh, we want the power set of X in the sense of HOD to be an HOD, but actually this will deliver it. Right? Okay, so what we need here, right, is, well, we've got this, we need to look at this equality here. So the equality here is just because HOD is transitive, right? And being a subset of X is something that's like delta zero. Right? Is delta zero. So if y is in HOT, then y is a subset of x, holds in HOT, if and only if y is a subset of x. We've already shown that HOT is transitive. So power set of X in HOD contains genuine subsets of X. So any subset of X that's lurking in HOD, HOD will recognize it as being a subset of X. So this equality is fine. Okay. The power set of X intersect HOD is just the power set of X intersect OD. Why? Again, it's definition chasing. If Y is a subset of X, and y is in OD, then this is the exercise that's that's up here. By this last exercise 480. Let's look at this again.
if x, so what, what are we saying here? We've got an x that's in HOD. So we have an x that's in HOD. Right? So it's in OD, but all of the elements of x and all of its elements and so on are also OD. Right? The exercise says right here, being in HOD means you're in OD and all of your elements are in HOD. So this comes down to the same thing. So if I've got an X here, which I'm talking about, if that's in HOD, then all of its elements of X are in HOD. So if Y is a subset of X here, right? And Y is in OD, I know that all the elements of Y are elements of X and they're in HOD. So all the elements of Y are in HOD. So therefore, Y is in HOD by the exercise here. <clears throat> Perhaps I'll say that again a little more slowly. Right? I've got that X is in HOD. Right? We're assuming it's in HOD. So it's in OD. And all of X's elements are in HOD. So let me take a Y, it's a subset of X, <clears throat> which is in OD. All the elements of Y are elements of X because it's a subset. So all the elements of Y are in HOD. So I've got the Y is in OD and all of its elements are in HOD. And that's enough here to say that it Y is in HOD. So this is the exercise for AT. Here. So what we have to show then is that this, or this here, is in is in OD. Suffice to show then that the power set of X intersect OD, which is this thing here, is in OD. Because then this set, again applied to the exercise, it's in OD, and all of the elements of this set are in HOD, which is here. So this puts the set itself into HOD. So then again, by the exercise, power set of X intersect OD being contained in HOD implies power set of set, set OD is in HOD. Okay, and I've run out of time here. So I'll continue with this then next time. Are there any